In this video, we're going to see how to remove any object from a scene in DaVinci Resolve. There are two ways to do this. One is object removal, and the other is object replacement. And let's take a look at an example. We're going to learn how to remove this mask that's already present on this laptop. We're going to remove that mask, make it a clean plate. And after that, we are going to learn how to add an Apple logo to it. We're also going to learn how to replace the license plate from this original footage into a license plate that we have created ourselves. The exposure of the number plate also changes as the car moves through the shot. We'll learn how to make it react to the environment. In the first video, I'm going to show you how to do an object replacement. I'll show you an object removal with another clip later in the video. I have this stock footage that I've just downloaded. It's of a car that's going inside a building. But here you can see that the number plate is clearly visible in this shot as well as in this shot. So go back to your original clip and find the first frame where you can see the number plate coming in, this frame here. And let's also find the last frame where I no longer see the number plate. So this frame over here. And let's bring that clip into Fusion. So with that clip selected, click the Fusion button and you'll see a media in and a media out. Click Shift and Space and bring up Surface Tracker. It will connect the Surface Tracker node into the Media In node. The goal here is to track this number plate, and that's what the Surface Tracker will do for us. So with the Surface Tracker highlighted and the Bounce option chosen here, find a frame where the number plate is very visible. So maybe here. And let's create a boundary mask for this. Try to be as precise as possible because this will affect your replacement later. And now what I'm going to do is going to look at the mesh. So click the mesh option next. And you can see that Resolve has created a mesh from this boundary. Let's make sure your mesh is fine. And there's enough coverage of all the points that are critical for your track to work. This looks okay to me. Now click track. I'm going to choose the quality to be better. The better the quality, the better your track. After you do that, click on this track forward then reverse button. The surface tracker will start tracking the surface that you have given it. And afterwards, scrub through to make sure that the track is good. So as you can see, the surface tracker seems to have done a good job. So it's tracking really well from the start to the end. The goal now is to replace this number plate with a different number plate on top of it. So what I've done in Photoshop, I've created a fake number plate and I'm going to track this number plate onto this car. So the surface tracker node has four icons surrounding it. The yellow is the media in. It's the footage that is being sent to the surface tracker. The white rectangle is the output footage from the surface tracker. The blue is a mask. We are not going to use a mask today, but what we are going to use is a green triangle. The green triangle is called the source two input. And that input is the footage that you want to replace on top of the tracked footage. So in our case, that footage is the fake license plate that we just created. So let's drag that footage in, the fake license plate. To take a look at what this footage is, click the number one. It'll bring it up on viewer one. I'm going to connect the output of media in two into the green triangle. And this will place the media in two into the surface that was tracked. Now, obviously it doesn't look good, but we'll fix this. To fix this, select the surface tracker, go to the result panel, choose compositing, and also expand the overlay placement. In the overlay placement, in positioning, choose the sliders. Now, once you've come to the sliders, adjust the X, Y, zoom width and height to match what the license plate should look like. The X and Y look okay to me, but I'm going to adjust the height because it looks stretched. So let's bring that down. I'm also going to adjust the, the width. So I'm going to place it right on top of what I can see. So that looks correct to me. And I'm just going to play around to make sure that it aligns with what was already there. So that kind of looks okay. And I'm just going to scrub forward and back to see what it looks like. It, it looks all right. Now, there are two things that I've noticed that are obviously making it look fake. One is that even when the car is in shadow, <laughs> it looks like a torchlight, the number plate, it's very bright. 
and that's not realistic. So that's issue number one. And issue number two is, let's say for a fraction of a second, let me remove this surface tracker. You can see how blurry the number plate actually is, but the number plate that we have is very sharp. And the reason for that is that there is no motion blur on, on our number plate, but there is natural motion blur on the original number plate. So those are two things that we need to take care of. So first, for the motion blur, there are two ways to do it. One is in the surface tracker, you have a motion blur slider. So we could either play with that. So you can see that it adds some motion blur. So I'm just gonna bring it up a tiny amount. Don't overdo this. It'll look very fake if you overdo it. So I'm just gonna a very tiny amount, okay? Something like that. The other way to do it is remember this footage is shot using a lens. So there is natural lens blur that also happens and I want to incorporate that. So with media into selected, hit shift and space bar and then search for lens blur. It'll add a lens blur node. And here, all I'm going to do is play with the blur size until it looks similar to what's underneath the original footage. Something like that looks okay to me. What's the next issue? The next issue is that it looks like a torch light. So to fix that, we need to play with the exposure of the number plate. So let's bring in a color corrector node. So here's a color corrector node. And I'm not going to overdo it. All that I'm going to do is I'm going to create keyframes and I'm going to try to match the gain and the shadows to make it look like what the original number plate looked like. Let's go to the initial frame here. Let's place a keyframe here on the gain and reduce the gain sufficiently so that it looks like what it used to look like. So I'm going to, just to help me out here, I'm gonna bring the original into the left. This frame, the original looks darker than what we have, so I'm going to reduce the gain even further until it looks similar. That looks similar to me. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. There's no science behind it. It's literally just eyeballing it. So let's keep going forward. It looks similar. Here it looks all right. In this frame, you can see that the exposure has just gone up. There's more light on the original than it is on ours. So go back one frame, add another keyframe, go one keyframe further, another keyframe here, and just increase the exposure a tiny bit until it looks similar to you. Keep going forward. Let's keep doing this. So over here, obviously it looks much brighter. So another keyframe. And the other thing you'd notice is that there is a bluish tint on the original number plate, which is not there on ours. So I'm just gonna move our color corrector to the blueish side of the spectrum to bring in a hint of a blue. Now don't overdo this. Now remember when you deliver this footage, your audience don't have the original number plate and the original footage as reference. So you can take some liberty, but it's always good to use the original footage to guide you. And also the good thing that's going for us here is that the shot is extremely short and it finishes before your eyes even register it. So when I play it full speed, honestly, it looks bright. Okay, this frame is a bit of an issue. It looks too bright. So let's go back to the color corrector. Another color corrector, gain keyframe. Let's make it really dark, maybe even darker. Okay, 0 0.03. Let's go back to the edit page and let's see what this looks like. So that's how you replace a number plate on a car. Now there's another example where you have a person working on a laptop. This is something you'll normally see with stock footage where they try to hide the make of the laptop with these weird stickers. And it just, I don't know why they do it. It's really hard to work with them, but here's how you fix it. So unlike the previous example where we simply slapped a new number plate on top of the existing number plate, we can't do that here because the Apple logo and the original shape of that patch are very different. So if you were to simply paste it the Apple logo on top of the patch, it's gonna look like this, which means that your patch needs to go before you bring in the Apple logo. And to do that, we need what's called the object removal tool. 
And the object removal tool is on the color tab and not on the fusion tab. So go to the color tab. It's the fourth one here. First, we need to track the area that we want to remove. So when you think tracking, you think power windows. So click on the power window. It's the fourth icon here, the circle. Since the shape is circular, I'm going to choose a circular power window. So if you scrub this video, you'll notice that the cup comes in between the laptop and the camera. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge if our mask is not quite perfect. So because that's the case, I'm going to create a really small mask. Just around. Once you've done the mask, come to the tracker window and let all five options be present and just do a front and back track. And just keep monitoring that the track looks all right to you. Okay, that looks all right. So let's scrub to make sure it's okay. Now what you do, in the effects on the top right, click that, search for object removal, create a serial node, and add the object removal effects to it. And then connect the blue rectangle to the blue triangle. This passes the mask that you had just created in node one into node two. Now choose the node with the object removal effects on it and click scene analysis. You can see that result is analyzing the scene to see what's present, what the textures are, what the colors are, and it'll try to remove the object for you. So what it's done here is that it's created a, an, a mask, an object removal mask. Now, it doesn't look good, it looks fuzzy, but that's because we have not yet done a clean plate. So on the right, at the bottom, you'll see a build clean plate, click that, and boom. Now, obviously, let's take a closer look here. You'll notice that there are some artifacts that have just come up. This is an artifact because it's what it's trying to do, it's trying to find places from the rest of the image to, uh, to replace this area with, it's found some out of focus bokeh that it's trying to add to that area, which makes it look bad. So what we can do is increase the search range and increase the analysis boundary and hit build clean plate again. Keep playing with it until you find a good result. All right, that looks passable to me. So once you've done that, you go back to your edit page. So that becomes the object removed. And now we need to add the Apple logo. So I have the Apple logo here. It's just a PNG that I downloaded from the internet. Now, what do we need to do? Let's think about this. I have removed the object, but I now need to place a logo, place an image on a surface that I need to track. So this is very similar to the car example that we did earlier. Go into Fusion. And in Fusion, you add a surface tracker. On the surface tracker, because there is this cup that comes in between what we want, I'm going to try to create a surface that does not include it. Now that I've done that, go to the mesh to make sure that there are enough points for your surface tracker to track. It looks all right to me. Go to track and then start a track back to forward. This might take a bit of time. It depends on how powerful your computer is. So we'll just wait until that happens. So once you've completed the track, you'll notice all these ticks on the timeline. Those are your keyframes that the Surface Tracker has created for you automatically. Let's scrub through. It seems to have done a good job. Let's go through all the way to the end. We now need to bring in the Apple logo and connect that to the Source 2 input, which is the green icon. Let's do that. <laughs> it looks terrible. But remember what we did last time, we played with the height, the width sliders. So click on the surface tracker, go to the result, expand the overlay placement and the compositing uh, tools. And in the positioning, bring in the sliders. Now play with the width and the height first, make it look approximately all right. Something like that. Now I have the Apple logo that's tracked onto the laptop, but as you can see that there's a patch behind it. What we really want is to be able to apply this logo onto the track that we had initially created here. So the way to do that is duplicate this footage, hit Alt and drag up, 
So you have two of the same footage, one above the other. In the Fusion tab, you will now have this track. Bring in a new background node. Remove the connection from the media in into the surface tracker. Delete it. You will see everything disappear. And then connect a background node to your surface tracker. You will see just the Apple logo here floating in void. With the background node selected, on the inspector panel, make the alpha all the way down to zero. So what we're doing here is that we have two layers here. And on the top layer, what we're doing is to add the Apple logo. And we're trying to compose that onto the bottom layer here. So that's it. That's how you track and remove objects from DaVinci Resolve. I hope you like this. And if you'd like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.